Hi everyone. So, Logic X is out. And uh, Apple's done a super job, I think, um, with this update. It's just simply amazing some of the stuff it does. A lot of the things I'm reading uh, online, though, people are, um, are a bit concerned about their 32 bit plugins. Uh, because, as you know, probably while you're watching this, is um, Logic is now 64 bit only, so all your 32 bit stuff won't work anymore. Um, however, here is a workaround uh, that solves that problem. Now, you need uh, a piece of software called the Vienna Ensemble Pro Server. Um, it's made by these guys, um, and they make the Vienna Ensemble uh, Symphonic Library. Uh, and this is the software you need. I, I won't go through it here. I'll put a link um, in the in the notes, and you can go and have a look. But what I wanted to show you today is how it sets up um, and that it does actually work, then you can go off and explore uh, the options yourself. I don't work for uh, Vienna or anything, it's just a lot of composers started using this to get around the 32-bit um, the memory problem. Uh, and so this has just happened to work really well for 32-bit synths. Okay, so what we need to do is we'll create a new track and we'll make it a software instrument. Um, it can do multi-timbral. For this exercise, um, I'm just going to keep it stereo. So create it, and we come to our plugins here, down here, and we're looking for AU Instruments VSL, and we want the Vienna Ensemble. I'm just, like I said, going to do the stereo one. So I put that in, and it calls up a little piece of software. What this does is it actually connects Logic to the Vienna server, and so it's pumping out MIDI and audio information to this piece of software. This is hosting your 32-bit plugins and then pumping it back in. Sounds strange, but it works perfectly. So what I'll do is I'll add um, a new instance to the server, um, and I'll call it um, the 32-bit test. And there it goes. It's instantly called this up. Um, at the moment, it's only one favor, but if you have a look, um, I can add Look at this. There's many audio channels, which could be um, all of your virtual instruments. You can add as many as you like. Um, it's an amazing piece of software once you learn how to use it. So just give me five seconds, and uh, I'll delete all these, and I'll be back. Okay, so here we are. Black, a blank rack again. And I'm going to go down here to uh, Spectrosonics, Omnisphere. And the only reason I'm doing this is just so you can see, uh, if I click on this, that it is the 32-bit version. There you go. So, uh, I'll find a sound. Um, anything will do. Actually, I won't make it any more. This will do. Okay. So I've got that loaded. I come back to Logic. And all I have to do now is connect, and you see the 32-bit test, that's what we called our server, connect it up, and now when I play my MIDI keyboard, there you go, it's working. So I'll come back in here now, I'll change this patch, I'll show, just to show you all. There it is, and now come back into Logic, and if I wanted to put on one of the new MIDI effects like the arpeggiator, no problem. If I want to use an audio effect, uh, like I have done in the past, so let's put maybe a, just a tape delay on it. <coughs> Everything works perfectly. Um, it's it's virtually. Uh, late and free, you can use hundreds and hundreds of, of different um, both soft, soft synths and um, audio effects. So it really is, um, it is a bit of a workaround, but it really is a solution that if you want to use 32-bit plugins uh, in Logic, um, then uh, it still can be done. Um, so yeah, follow the link and hopefully this may help you out.